In the previous lesson, we left off with this simple counter component. We saw that all the logs inside the event handler showed zero and only the last update one in the end, updating the count to 10. And the question is, what if we actually want to update state multiple times based on the previous value? Turns out React has a very simple solution for that. To allow you to reference this simple counter component in the GitHub repo, I will create a new file called previous state counter dot JSX and copy the same code to start with. Copy from simple counter and paste it. Update the component name to previous state counter. We will remove the set timeout log because it's not necessary and update app.jsx to call the previous state counter component. Now we already know what this version does. Click increment. All three set count calls use the same snapshot value of count, which is zero. So React queues updates to one, five, and 10. And the last one wins, rendering 10 in the browser. What we really want is for React to take the latest state at that moment and build on top of it. For that, React lets you pass a function to the setter instead of a value. Let's update the handle click function to use that pattern. So set count, you pass in a function where you get access to the previous state value and you return the previous state value plus one. And we will update the console log statement. After set count, previous, returning previous plus one. Similarly, for set count, count plus five, arrow function, it receives the previous state and returns previous plus five. And finally, for count plus 10, previous returns previous plus 10. Let's also update the log statements. After set count, previous returning previous plus five. And after set count, previous returning previous plus 10. Now these functions here, they're called updater functions. Let's go back to the browser and see what happens. Refresh, clear the console, count is zero, click increment, and now the UI shows 16. That is zero plus one plus five plus 10. All three updates were applied. The logs inside the event handler though, still show zero, which makes sense because we are still in the same render snapshot. So let's add logs inside the updater functions themselves to see what React is doing. For the first set count, add curly braces because we now have to work with multiple lines, add the return keyword, and a log statement. First updater function, previous count is equal to previous. Similarly, let's update the second function, add curly braces, a return statement, a console log, second updater function, previous count is equal to previous, and the last one, curly braces, return previous plus 10, and a log statement, third updater function, previous count is equal to previous. So we have moved the console log statements from being outside set count to being inside the updater functions. This should be updater and not updated. Now, when we head back to the browser, refresh, clear the console, and click the increment button, you can see the console messages. First updater function, previous count is equal to zero. For the second updater function, previous count is equal to one. For the third updater function, previous count is equal to six. Finally, we have render phase, component rendering with count is equal to 16 after adding 10 to the last previous value. So what is actually happening here? Why does passing a function give you the latest state? Here's the mental model. When you do this, calling set count with a value, React takes the value you pass in and queues it. You can think of it as set count to one. Similarly, when you do this, React queues another value, something like set count to five. And the same for set count to 10. The last one wins. And with the value of count being zero in that render phase, the final count becomes 10. 
But when you pass a function to set state, React does not run that function right away. Instead, it queues the function itself. This is the same for set count, previous is equal to previous plus 5, and set count, previous is equal to previous plus 10. Later, after your event handler finishes, React goes through its list of updates, and for each updater function, it takes the current state value, passes it into the updater as previous value, and uses the return value of the updater function as the next state value. So in our case, React does something like this. Start with previous is equal to zero. First updater, return previous plus one, which is zero plus one, so one. Second updater, now previous is equal to one, so return previous plus five, which will be six. Third updater, now previous is equal to six, return previous plus 10, which is 16. Each updater uses the latest result from the previous one, not the snapshot from the event handler. This is why this approach works, even though our event handler only ever saw count is equal to zero. Let me show both approaches side by side. In the snapshot approach, where we pass a value to set state, all three calls to set count use the same snapshot value of count, which is zero. So React queues updates to one, five, and 10 and the last one wins rendering 10 in the browser. In the updater approach, where we pass a function to set state, each updater function uses the latest result from the previous one. So React queues the updater functions and then runs them in order, building on top of the previous value. The name prev, by the way, is just a convention, short for previous. You can name it anything like previous count, value, or current but prev is what you will see in most React code bases, and I recommend using it too. Now, when should you pass a value to set state, and when should you pass a function? The rule is simple. If your new state depends on the previous state, use an updater function. If you are just setting a value directly, the regular syntax is fine. Now, here is an interesting question for you. In our handle click function, we called set count three times. But in the console, we still see only one render face component rendering with count is equal to 16. If every set count triggers a re render like we learned earlier, shouldn't we see three render messages in the console? Is this a bug? Well, let's find out next.